Hi Internet Land, it's MaggieBot, and today we are going to do a quick tutorial and review of a new space tactics game called Quantum. Uh, Quantum is a two to four player game from Fun Forge Games, and I know it's being uh, published and produced uh, with uh, Passport Game Studios here in the States. Uh, so they're local to us, we know those guys pretty well. Uh, this was a game I played down at Board Game Geek Con in November, and it came out maybe two or three weeks ago. Uh, as far as I can tell, it doesn't actually play well at two players, so we're giving on, up on that temporarily, but the three to four player game is a nice, very tense, very territorial uh, game with lots of cool little combos, special powers, and just enough luck for me to get some really <laughs> bad dice rolls. Um, so we're going to take a look. I'm going to set up a board for four players and show you kind of how the game works. Um, there's lots of different maps, so um, I'm going to set out a bunch of tiles. They look like this, with a planet and a number, um, but in, in the box even, and you can make up your own, of course, it comes with a bunch of different like um, map suggestions for you. Um, so we'll get right into that, and then afterward I will follow up with what I thought and a little bit of a review. Thanks, guys. I have set up a game of quantum here in the center by placing several tiles. Um, the higher number ones generally are smaller maps and when you have the lower numbered planets like sevens and eights the maps get a little more extensive but I wanted something that would fit on camera real well. This, the way this is set up is actually a pretty intense, pretty advanced map but we'll get into that all later. Um, included with each player piece is a, a selection of seven dice of your color. Three will start out as ships. Two will start out on your board. So you'll see at the top of the board I've got a couple here marking dominance in research. You get a number of quantum cubes. There may be a formula to this, but generally speaking, you'll probably have to try and get a cube placed out into each part of the board because these are Quantum's uh, endgame condition whereas when you place your last cube onto the board that ends the game so that's how you win is by getting out all your cubes similar to Alien Frontiers which I heard a lot about Alien Frontiers when this game was coming out and they're really nothing alike, they're not the same type of game um, after that you everybody takes their ships rolls them at the beginning of the game after everyone has rolled their ships, you have the opportunity to see what everyone else has, and you get one mulligan, so you could re-roll these if you wanted. And the person with the lowest total ships, so right now this is a 13, and red player had a 15, the person with the lowest total would actually get to go first. So in our case, it's the green player, because they have a 6, 2, and 1. So, let's take a better look. Let's take a better look at the player map. So up at the top you have spaces for um, ships if they're waiting to be deployed. You have a space to put your extra quantum cubes. You have a research and a dominance tally. You have a description of the six types of ships involved in the game. And at the bottom, this is super handy, it has all of the actions you could possibly take. So now that we have the board set up and we have everybody ready to go, let's talk about the actions you can take on turn. Each turn, each player may take three actions, and each of their ships can activate a special ability one time. Some of those activated abilities will happen during an action, and some are um, before or after an action has taken place. So, we've got a few different ones, and they're kind of listed down here on the bottom of the board. It says actions take three, each ship it has a description of all the ships and then it has nice text so the reminder card is really good um, the first one is called a reconfigure it's pretty simple if I have a ship out where I would prefer it to be any other ship or maybe I need to roll a defense or something I can reconfigure that ship and place it back on the board now if I roll the same number as I often do I can roll it until I get a new result so my 5 has changed to a 1 that is one action uh, another action I can take, if, if I have a die 
uh, a ship that's been kicked off the board, um, I can remove it from my scrapyard down on my board and place it into orbit around a planet in which I have a cube. So these little quantum cubes anywhere I have one. The orbit is, um, sorry, um, um, so <laughs> the orbit are the four spaces that are adjacent to the planet here. The ones in the corners, ships will have to move through to get to the different planets, but they don't actually count as being around the planet, which comes in handy later for the quantum cubes. So if I was trying to reintroduce this die, I would place it back there without changing the pips, and that is a deploy action. Um, one of the more useful and interesting movements in this game is the move attack action. Now, each ship, once per turn, as an action, can move and or attack. You can never move a ship and then move it again to attack someone, so you have to be really careful about making sure you count everything perfectly. So, in this example, if it's Green's turn, um, they will move this three ship. Now, a ship can move as many spaces as it has pips. So a three can move three spaces, and that's orthogonal, not diagonal. So one, two, three. Now the green ship has moved into a space with another ship. This is only possible if you're trying to attack. So the attacker rolls a die, the defender rolls a die, the sum is added together, so I've got five versus six, and the lower number wins. So in this case, the attacker won. What will happen if an attacker wins is the defender loses the, the ship, they re-roll it, place it in their scrapyard on their board, the attacker can move into the space that they attacked or move back to where they came from right before they attacked. Each time you win a battle, you raise your dominant score, which is in the upper left-hand corner. Um, you take it up from one to six. Though, if someone beats you in a battle, your dominance actually gets taken down by one. Um, you're really trying to get to that six level because that'll let you place a cube for free. It's pretty sweet. Um, let's see. if. If in, in a case uh, that attacker moves in and doesn't win the attack, you just move back and nothing else happens. It's really not bad in this game to attack someone, even if you don't win, because there's very little penalty for doing so. Um, the fourth action, I'm going to have to do a little manipulation of the board here. Um, so if I have this out on my turn, for two of my three actions, I can construct a quantum cube, and that means placing one of my cubes onto the board, onto a planet. Now, each planet only has room for one cube from each player. So, these ten uh, planets are usually only used in the four-player game because there's four spaces in them. Now, in order to actually place a cube onto a planet, in the orbit spaces, so those ones that are adjacent to it, the pips on the dice have to add up to exactly the planet number. So I have a 5, a 4, and a 1, so I can place onto this 10 planet. If instead this was a 5, I would have to wait until I could move this one away so that my only dice there add up perfectly to that number. Now it does take two actions to place a quantum cube, but like I said, you have three actions a turn, so it's usually not bad at all. Um, and the last thing you can do, and I almost consider this kind of a, I don't know, a throwaway action, you can increase your research. So whenever you don't know what to do with your last action for a turn, you can take up your research. Now this starts at 1 at the beginning of the game and ticks up until it reaches 6 on a turn. And what this does is it has to do with the last part of a, of a round. So before I get into what the individual ships do, at the end of a round, after you've taken your actions and moved any ships you wanted, you will check of whether or not you've placed a quantum cube or increased your research to six. And if either of those things are true, you get to take a card. So I have two decks of cards. Um, you have a black kind of instant sorcery deck, and you have a white equipment deck. Now, these black effects, you'll have three of each pile exposed at all times, so you'll be able to see three of them. And, of course, I just pulled the three identical ones off the top, so let's try that again. So, if I were to take a black card, 
the black card effects happen immediately and are one-time uses. So if I took momentum, I would immediately take another turn with just two actions. If I took sabotage, I would uh, immediately have all other players choose and discard one of their command cards, which are the white ones. So there's some really powerful effects in these, including extra dice uh, for ships. And then you have the white cards, which are equipment and abilities. And so you can have up to, there's little slots on the side here, you can have up to three of these. So once you have your fourth one, you can discard one of the ones you already had, or just discard the fourth one you took so that other people couldn't have it. The last thing I need to tell you about is the actual ship abilities in the game. So each ship has a special ability. Um, they start as simply as a 6 gets a free reconfigure once per turn. So, instead of using one of my three actions, I can reconfigure the 6 for free and place it back where it came from. Um, a 5 ship can move and attack diagonally. So it can speed across the board much faster than any other number but it's a really high number to attack with. So what will normally happen is you move up with a 5, and then you'll try and get an effect to replace it with a different die. Um, a 4, which I don't have any on the board, oh no. So a 4 <laughs> can choose on a turn for free to change into a 3 or change into a 5. That's a pretty powerful effect. Um, the 3 itself is probably the thing that makes this area control game the most fun. The 3 is a swap. Once per turn, swap any of your own dice with the 3. And so as I said, I moved up to 5, I swapped with the 3, and now the 3 can attack. And the 3 has a much better chance of attacking and succeeding than a 5 does, because you want that lowest roll. So, the warping effects in this game are really neat. Um, the second neatest one, if you ask me, is the transport. So, I'm going to give you an example. A 2 is a uh, flagship, and so what its power is, is that it can pick up a die in any space surrounding it. So it can pick up this 5, move it, and then drop the 5 down. So, that could be even crazier, let's say I had a 1 over here, so this 2 picks up the 1, it moves, it drops this down, and now we get to what the 1 does. The 1, moving very slow, can strike adjacent to where it is, so it doesn't need to be able to travel into the same space. It activates its strike from one space away, so the 1 could attack this 3, and that's pretty darn powerful because it's one fewer move that you have to account for, and if you can only get the two so close to that, the one is really going to help you short up those extra spaces. Um, that's pretty much it. So on a typical turn, people take moves and construct cubes, and what happens is, as you go, um, you'll have fewer and fewer planets that are available to take the cubes you have because you can't have more than one on the same planet. So it becomes more typical, like you can tell where people are going to start placing and play a little bit of catch the leader. Uh, the effects of the cards are absolutely bonkers and they do anything and everything that you think they're going to, including extra actions and manipulating the dice, manipulating the planet numbers, a little bit of everything on these. And so I think you've got a pretty good grip of what to do on the game, and then we're going to follow up with my thoughts. My thoughts on Quantum so far are sort of mixed, um, pretty darn positive. It's a really well, cleanly made game. Um, it is super simple. You can teach it really fast. And I, I can't stress this enough, these player cards are really amazing. This is definitely designed to be a game where no one should feel left out as long as they can read a little bit of English and I don't know if they did this in other languages but the the format for this card is really beautiful and should be copied by others even if it had to be a little smaller the the full size of this is really nice it just makes it where you need a little bigger of a table to play on um, it also gives you a place to store your dice 
to have a scrapyard to show everyone how many cubes you have left over to put those research and dominance dies in place. And um, the components are, are really, really beautifully done. The, the tiles are super thick. Um, they feel like they're going to hold up forever. I could, I could play this game 50 times and you never know. Um, the dice are these kind of creamy, almost translucent, not quite frosted dice. They're very nice. They're normal size and they probably weren't that expensive. So the game was pretty reasonable. I paid about 40 for mine. Um, the quantum cubes are just fine. They're pretty generic. Um, the two things about this game, and in not in a negative way, but in a good-ish way, the cards are really broken. <laughs> Um, at one point, my game last night, uh, our opponent, who had never played the game before, ended up where as long as he had more ships on the board at the start of his turn, he got an extra action and he got a free move every round. And so if he just killed off a couple of our ships and kept his numbers high, he would just have five actions around and it made it really impossible to stop him. So part of the game is going to be preventing those big wins early and making sure people don't get all the extra actions. Um, there's a card called Stealthy that says when you redeploy, you can deploy anywhere. Whereas normally when you deploy, you can only deploy where you already have a cube. It says deploy anywhere that's empty. And so you can really jump across the board and surprise people. Uh, stealthy is really crazy. But there's lots of those effects. So at some point, everybody gets some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the black cards aren't quite as bad, the one-time use ones. The, the one that makes everyone else sacrifice a card is pretty punishing, but luckily I've only seen that from the person that was behind. I've never seen the person in the lead make everyone else sacrifice an effect. Um, let's see. Yeah, the, the two-player is a little rough. I've not had a good two-player experience of it. But we have yet to try having some extra ships or giving some sort of rule change that will make it a little more fun. Um, it just ended up, it's area control with two players, so it just didn't really feel fun or work very well. But the four player, and especially the four player, is really tense and well well put together. Um, that, and that brings me to my last point, and it's this is just me griping, because the game is so good. But I, I'm often surprised when an alien race game doesn't have any kind of asymmetrical abilities. And I think that in the lore somewhere that these are all guys from the same place. But you have like, you have this dude who's super humanoid looking, and the green board is like this alien guy, and I don't know. This dude, red guy, I don't know. So, all four of them are identical. They have identical abilities, they have identical ship abilities. Um, so maybe, maybe me griping about this and then complimenting them for such a clean design is folly. Because you can't have clean designs and asymmetrical abilities. So now that I've thought this through, the game is really good, just as is. Uh, I look forward to lots more plays of it. Um, the different maps are really interesting. You get lots of shapes and cool ways of playing. And each of the maps tells you how many quantum cubes to play to. You don't play to the same number every time. And I even got the rules for a void tile from Board Game Geek. Um, I'm sorry to say this, but you don't actually need to buy this. Uh, the void tile, you could just cross out one of the planets and play with a void tile effect. Um, but it basically, any ships on the void tile pay out research points toward free cards. Uh, so any, at the beginning of your turn, you get research points equal to the number of dice on the void tile. So it feeds multiple players. Um, that looks like a lot of fun. So <laughs> um, I'm having a blast with it. The little combos you get off with the warp ships and stuff and the transport ships are just fun. Anything that feels that crazy, um, short of Rapello, I don't know if you guys can see it up there, uh, but this one is really good fun tactics with dice and just watch out for those constant sixes because 
I swear to God, that's the only time I roll sixes is when I don't want to. <laughs> but, um, yeah, go grab it, and next week we will take a look at Russian Railroads, which I've been having a blast with as well. Uh, thanks, guys. We'll see you later.